Take your Bibles, 2 Kings chapter 23. 2 Kings chapter, or 2 Samuel, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 23. I'm sorry about that. 2 Samuel chapter 23. That's all good. Don't matter where you turn. Let's just get all on the same page. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the word of God this morning. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And I want to start reading in verse 1. This is a strange sermon a little bit for a Mother's Day, but I think you'll find out where I'm going with it as if you hang on for just a little bit. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 1. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The king, or the God of Israel, said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. He shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springeth out of the earth by clear shining after rain, although my house be not so with God. Yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall, all, shall be all of them as thorns thrust away. Because it cannot be taken with hands, but the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. They shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. I want you to notice in verse 3, there's a little phrase where I get the whole sermon. In about the second line, it says, he that ruleth over men must be just. It's that phrase, ruleth over men. I want to take that little phrase and I want to talk to you this morning on the subject leading a king. Leading a king. And I hope you'll listen. I truly believe that and, and truly today is going to be more almost as a more of a parenting type of a sermon to help moms and dads. May I just say that you say, oh, my children are gone. You're always rearing your children. Always. If they're out of the house, you're showing them how to grow old. You're showing them how to live when you get older. Um, Brother Stafford is, is, is an old man. How old are you, Brother Stafford? Uh, 83 years of age. He's a young man, young codger. He's not as old as Miss Shirley. But, uh, but 83 years of age, still, re still raising his children. He said, but they don't live in his house. He's showing them how to serve God until the day he dies. I want to talk about that subject, leading a king. Father, take these next few minutes. And Lord, I think of every mom that is here. And thank you for the children who showed up for mom. Mom, I asked them to come. And they love their mama enough to come. I appreciate children who are that thoughtful of their mom to come to a church on Mother's Day. I pray that you would take this word that we're going to talk about today, and as we break it down, allow me to be a help to every mama and every daddy, and then the children that are, that are, that are just listening, may they take the admonition at the end to understand the importance of what we're talking about today, please, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. David is an old man. I want to go to this, see if this works today or not. I'm sorry about that. David is an old man. Give me some um, monitor up here. David is an old man. His life is almost over. And he now begins to reminisce about everything that has happened in his life. Can I just kind of go through some things that I wouldn't be surprised that David was thinking about. I imagine he thought about the time as a teenage boy when the lion and the bear came into the field. We all know the story. That lion came in the field and he grabbed the lion and he, he grabbed it by the beard and just gave it a good old boxing punch. Knocked it out. Killed it. 
And I can imagine David begins to think about that, and boy, his, his chest kind of gets a little bit big. And then he thought about the bear that came inside, and he grabbed that bear by the beard. That's why I don't grow a beard. You say, why? I don't want somebody to kill me. That's why. But anyway, but he, but he, but he grabbed him, and he killed the bear with his own hands. Yeah, I, can think, I can see him thinking about that. I can see David in his mind as he reminisces as an old man. As he went to the Valley of Elah, and, he, and as he's visiting his brothers, a big old giant, nine feet, nine inches tall, a massive muscular man, comes out, defies the God, his God, and David stood up and said, no, no one's going to talk about God, my, my God that way. And David said, somebody's got to stand up, and the older brother wouldn't stand up. So the younger brother, thank God for the younger brothers. You say, why? Because I'm the younger brother, amen. Are you the younger brother, Brother Steve? Thank you. We're spiritual, aren't we? Thank you very much. We're the only two that think we're spiritual. But anyway, do you understand? But he stood up and he stood before, he stood before that old giant. I could see David think about how he, how he, he, he as an old man, he probably thought, that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. You know, when you're young, you don't think about it. You just say something and you go, and then after it's all done, it's like, man, that was a dumb move. But, but God, thank God God stepped in, you know, and he, he can think about that old rock and that sling as he began to let go of that rock, and that rock just flew and hit old Goliath, and, and, and Goliath um, fell down, and David thought about it as he ran over and jumped on top of Goliath and grabbed the sword and chopped his head off. And I can see old David reminiscing about those days. I can see him thinking about as he, as he hid in the wilderness from the spear of Saul. I can see him as he thought about, boy, God protected me in those days. I can see David reminisce about the time the crown was placed on his head for the first time. As he felt, I'm now the king of God's country. I can see a tear begin to run down his face. As he remembers that one night that he committed adultery at Bathsheba, the heartache that it brought. But then I can see a smile come on the old man's face as he, as he thought about Psalm 51 and the mercy of God that forgave him from that sin. David sits as an old man looking back. David thought to himself, boy, what a full life. But then I like what David said. He that ruleth over men must be just. David said, I didn't get here by myself, Brother Melvin. I got here because of a mama who invested every day inside of my life as a young boy. We don't ever hear anything about David's mama, but I guarantee it, that mama was a big influence on his life because his own daddy, get this now, his own daddy didn't even believe in him. If you ever look and read the story of King David, his daddy didn't think that David could ever become a king. Apparently, a mama did. Apparently, a mama must have thought of a young David and said, I want to give back, I want to raise this boy to be a king, I want to raise this boy to, do be, to become something for God. And David became that great king, if I could put it this way, because of a mama and a daddy that led him as a king as he was a little child. Can I say this this morning? Every mother is a leader. We all hear the statement, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Every child knows don't get mama upset. Come on now. Everybody knows you want to keep mama happy, but can I tell you, I thank God for the moms. I was thinking about my mom this week, and my mom, you just have to know her. She was pretty, pretty rigid. She was very much black and white and all of her thinking, but when I needed a soldier to cry on, my mama was always there. My mom corrected me. Boy, she was hard on me a little at times, and I don't know why, because I was such a perfect child. You can say amen to that one. And your laughing does not say the amens right there. But anyway, but my mama, she was, she was, she would spank me at times, but when I when I saw some successes and I did some things for God, my mama cheered me on and she said, Son, son, you're doing the right thing. I can remember that my mom at nighttime, I'd see her cry, I'd see her praying at nighttime. Boy, thank God for a praying mama that prayed for her son, that God would protect her son from saying, Hey, thank God for a mama like that. I thank God for my mama. At the end of her life, as I saw her in her hospital bed, and 
So because some circumstances in our life, she said, son, don't ever, don't ever break the heart of those who love you. She said, son, always do right. Four weeks later, she stepped on heaven's shores. There's been many a time I've thought about my mom in my office. I have a little screen, and one of the pictures that scrolls is my mom, and I always look up, and I always think about mama. She'd make me eat my food. No, we're not going down the road of that, that wicked food. Yes, yeah, she made me eat it. She'd make me eat the broccoli, and she'd say, son, it's good for you. And I thought, what in the world? How can trees be good for you? You know, broccoli just looks like a tree. And as a kid, I didn't, now, now I love broccoli, but as a kid, I hated broccoli. And, and she'd make lima beans. I didn't really like lima beans as a kid. She'd make peas, and I still don't like peas. She'd make okra every once in a while, and that was God's forbidden fruit right there. Somebody help me out. I didn't say about my mama. She'd say, eat your food. But then she could make the dessert. She could make the bread. She could make the meat. Boy, the everything. The mama, she was that leader inside the home. My daddy was out working um, um, on them in the ministry. Mama was at home leading her son, leading her children, trying to lead them like a king. She'd always make me believe, son, God's going to use you someday. God's going to make something out of you someday. you got to live right. Leading a king. The best leadership book in all the world is God's Word. People buy leadership books. I have people all the time say, hey, could you, would, you, would you like to read this leadership book? And I always say, why read a second-rate leadership book when I got the best leadership book right here in the old King James Bible? I mean, why? I mean, I'm not against reading books on leadership, but I'm telling you the best leadership book in the world is right here because any leader that's ever been successful is following the principles found inside of this book right here. You say, how do you know? Read it sometime and you'll figure it out. You see, this book is a book on leadership. And as I was going through this passage of Scripture, I want you to keep your Bible open and your pens ready. I found several things that every parent should do inside the home as they lead. And I want to point these things out to you. Number one, can I tell you, every parent needs to be a leader. I want you to look at that phrase, ruleth, and it says, over there, it says it right there, rule it, verse 3, ruleth over men and ruling in the fear of God. Circle the words, ruleth and ruling, and put this beside it, make a decision. Make a decision. Can I talk to moms and dads a little bit? Can I just tell you, children don't need parents who leave, it, who leave the door open. Children need parents that make a decision even when it's not popular. Huh? Listen, there is no secret about parenting. Why? you got to make a decision. Listen to me. If you're trying to be a friend to your children as they're growing up, let me tell you something. They'll hate you when you get older. At some point, you got to make decisions. There's times that a parent has to say, no, you're not doing that. Why? Because the child doesn't know better. If you're always trying to appease that child, you got to make a decision at times. There's times, listen to me, too many mamas and too many daddies are saying, well, I don't want to run them off. They're going to run off if you don't make a decision. By nature, we run off. By nature, we're going to go that way. But somebody has to make a decision inside. My mom never said, son, whatever you want to do. My mama never said that. Now, she might ask me and say, son, what do you think? What would you like to do? And I would tell her, and if it was the right decision, she would commend me. But if it was the wrong decision, she'd say, no, you're not going to do that, and this is why. Remember, there's a boy I wanted to play with across the street growing up, and, and I'd always want to play with him. And I'd say, and I said, mama, would you let me, would you let me go and play with this boy and, and she say no you can't play with him I said but mama she says no and I said but why she said because I told you why she goes I told you you're not going to play and that's the why huh? so we've all been there come on now and listen I don't know sometimes mamas get the bad rap because they're that they're the bad guy inside the home. Can I tell you, you better thank God that your mama was, was, was bold enough to say no you're not going to play with them 
Huh? Because I'm telling you, and by the way, some of you moms and dads that have little children, you better learn how to make the decision inside the home. Stop letting the children make all the decisions. Say, sometimes you have to make that difficult decision, but I'm saying children need parents who are decisive in what they do. You cannot lead people if you're not willing to make decisions. Can I go a step further? You cannot be a leader if you're not willing to make difficult decisions. How many times did your mama, your daddy, make a decision? It was difficult. They wanted to help you out, but it was difficult. And at some time in your life, and by the way, sometimes the difficult decision is a mama saying, I've got to do away with my pleasures so I can raise my children. Do you understand I had a mama that never complained? I didn't, I didn't grow up in a rich home at all. I grew up in a poor home. We lived kind of not in the, not in the worst side of town, but we, weren't, we definitely did. We lived on the lower side of the lower class of the, of the middle income side. We lived just about a, a street from, the, from a gang area. That's about where we grew up. And I'm telling you, my mom never complained about our house. My mom never said, boy, I wish I had another house. My mom always loved the house that we were in. She never one time griped, as far as I know, to, to my dad about the income or the car that we drove. And let me tell you something. We drove some cars. My dad bought an old English Ford. Who in here knows what an English Ford is? It's a little small, small little car, and it's a stick shift. My dad had to fly out of town to a meeting, and the only car we had was this English Ford. The other one was broken down. My mom never knew how to drive a stick shift. So on the way to the airport, my dad is teaching my mom how to drive a stick shift. All of us kids are in the back seat, Mama's got the clutch in, and she's letting you know how it is, and, you, and we're, we're all going like this inside the back seat. And, we're, and, of course, as a child, and, of course, we didn't overplay it at all. Of course not. That car was going back and forth and back and forth, and then Dad got out of the car. We really kind of gave it to Mom just a little bit. I remember Mama never complained. She just kind of she just kind of said, kids, shut up or I'll kill you. Yes, ma'am, you know. But she made decisions. Your children, listen to me, your children need you to make decisions. The older you get, they still need you to make decisions. They don't, listen to me, if something's right, okay. If something's wrong, don't do it. You've got to make the decision. Number two, I want you to look at this. Remember that God's watching you. Remember that God's watching. Notice what it says in verse 3. Ruling in the what? Fear of God. Fear of God. What does that mean? What, 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 do you, what, do you, what do you mean by the fear of God? I want you to just circle that phrase. Ruling in the fear of God. I want you to put this beside it. Fear God. Fear God. He said, ah, oh, we ought not to fear God. You better fear God. The same God that loves you is the same God that can take your life and the same God that can take everything away. You don't believe me? Ask Job sometime. Now, does that mean when it says to fear God, does that mean I need to tremble and shake the whole time? No, it need, means to respect the power that God has. Who in here has ever worked with electricity? Who in here has ever been zapped by electricity? Yeah. Once you got zapped, do you not respect? Do you not fear the electricity, I, was, I forget who it is in our church. Oh, Brother Flores. Brother Flores, he, he, he's helped me with the light over here. and he, I mean, he shut down just about the whole plant just to change the little light. I said, you afraid? He goes, yep. <laughs> I said, real men don't turn up. But anyway, listen, do you understand? Fearing God is saying, okay, I know if I don't respect this, it can zap me. But the same power that can zap me and hurt me can also help me. You know, a mama ought to have that type of power that a child ought to say the very mom that can whoop me is the very mom that can help me. Children ought to fear mom. I know that's not popular in our day, but children need to fear mom. Because I'm telling you right now, Ever, okay, 
Most of us, I don't know how you are, but I, if someone asks you, do you want to get spanked by daddy or by mama? Daddy any day of the week. Because my mama would whoop the snot out of us. I mean, she didn't know when to stop. You know, she'd start spanking us, and we'd start crying. She goes, I want to spank you till you stop crying. We'd stop crying. I want to spank you till you start crying. Would you make up your mind? Obviously, Brother Caleb didn't get enough spankings, but anyway. Do you understand? Listen to me. There ought to be a fear of mom, a respect. Oh, I can't stand it when kids kind of talk back to mom. No, sir. Let me tell you something. A child that talks back to their mom, uh, um, God help their soul. That mama brought you into this world, went to the jaws of death so that you could be born, and you treat her like a piece of dirt, and you, well, my mom's not perfect, and you are. Come on now. At some point, hey, I'm saying mom and dad, rule in the fear of God. Have a respect for God. I said, one, make decisions. Second, fear God. Third, be on top side all the time. Be on top side all the time. Look at verse 4. Shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds. I was looking at that, and I thought, boy, mama needs to be on top side all the time. You know, nothing wrong, listen to me, with you having a smile on your face. It ought not to be that you're walking around. Oh, we got to walk on eggshells. Around. No, be on top side. And daddy, by the way, men, you ought to be the same way. Nothing worse, nothing worse than children being raised by Eeyore. You say, what do you mean by that? I mean, dad, you know, mom and dad are always dragging all the time. There ought to be a smile on the face. There ought to be joy inside the house. There ought to be a good atmosphere inside the house. Listen to me. Turn off the world's music. Get some good Christian music and get an atmosphere that is happy inside of the home. Hey, Stop letting the, okay, stop letting television set the spirit inside the home, mama, and you set the spirit. You have that good attitude. You have that good spirit. And daddy, let me tell you something, nothing worse than when you're coming home and the atmosphere of the home changes because daddy comes home and daddy gripes and complains and always tears down the wife. Oh, let me tell you something, that lady is not someone that ought to be griped and complained about all the time. You ought to cherish her. Oh, topside. People ought to think that you wake up with a smile on your face. Alarm clock goes off. Oh, it's great. It's 4 30 in the morning. Oh, wonderful. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let me go get a cup of coffee. Oh, what a wonderful day. No, no, listen, your children may not see you crawl out of bed early in the morning. But they ought to see a smile on mama's face all the time. Yeah, there's times mama has to cry and there's time daddy has to cry. But I'm telling you, the home ought to be a place where there's a good spirit inside the home. Ought to be that the sun, the sun is always shining. The, the kid, listen to me, the kids don't need to know the struggles you're going through. You got to be the leader and just lead and you carry the burden. You say, well, how do I unload the burden? You run to Christ. Say, God, I can't carry this alone. And then you leave the throne of God and come back in the presence of the children and let let them know everything's all right in my father's house. Be on top side. Be on top side. Number four. Lead gently. I'm going to stop on this in a little bit. Verse four, it says, as the tender grass springing out of the earth. You know, that, that's the new blade. You ever plant grass and they say you can't mow it? Was it three weeks? Is that right? Three weeks, something like that? You know, it's a tender blade. Mom and Dad, let me tell you something. Those children inside your, inside your house, you got to lead gently. You can't always, and I said this to my son, you can't browbeat them to death. If you're always talking down to your children, eventually they're going to believe it. And they'll live down to what you say they are. Lead gently. 
Oh, my kids. I, man, they, they never listen. Never listen. L- listen to yourself. Never listen. Never's a big word. I imagine they listen to you sometimes. Let me ask them. Do they listen to you when, they say, when you say it's time to eat? Then never is not there. You say it's the only time. Don't matter. They do listen sometime. Come on now. I've watched a lot of moms and dads run their kids away from them because they're always, they don't lead gently. It's always boom, 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 boom. Beating them all the time. And I say beating, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about just the, you're always driving them down and driving them down and driving them down. Okay, I understand there's times you've got to lead your children, but can I tell you, don't fight the whole battle at the same time. Pick one battle, fight that one battle, help your child in that one area, but lead them gently. You see them succeed, praise them. You know, if Brother Trimble got up, come on, come here a second. And I said, Lee, and I'm the pastor of this church, and he starts leading the scene, just kind of lead, just kind of lead like, you're an, like your brother Caleb. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so he starts just kind of, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I could come over here. Let me tell you what leading gently is, uh, what, what's not leading gently. What's wrong with you? Don't you know how to lead better? Well, don't you know you raise your hands up high? So what's wrong with you? Now you lead the singing. <laughs> Purple shirt, really? What is wrong with you? Did your wife dress you? We're not going to go down that road. (laughs) Who's speaking heathen language out here? But anyway. Now listen to me. I could defeat his spirit if all I do is pick him apart. He happens to be a very good song leader. Now somebody needs to pop the bubble as his head grows right now. Happens to be a good song leader. Does he have to improve? I'm not here. Listen, I'll, I'll correct him every once in a while and it's not, not that often, just about every other minute, that's all. But, but, but leading gently doesn't pick him apart. Thank you, BC. Could you imagine me going to my daughter? What is wrong with you? You hit that wrong key again. Why don't you listen to the lessons that I've given you as I taught you how to play that piano? No, I have not taught her. But anyway. Mom and dad, you better learn how to lead gently but firmly. Those children, you can defeat their spirit like that. You'll break the blade of them becoming the king that God wants them to become. Find some things to praise them, but yet still be firm on what you believe and what you're going to do. Number five, be clear in your directives. Be clear in your directives. Notice verse four, tender grass springing out of the earth by, notice this, clear shining. You know what that means? God says, okay, mom and dad, when you lead, Have a clear line. Come here, Brother Caleb. Don't cross that line. You understand me, son? Do not cross that. I walk away. He being the rebellious child that he is, just decides to put his foot down. Hey, get your foot up. No, no, I told you, don't do that. No, no. I said, don't cross that line. See, the line's drawn. You know what happens with a lot of parents? They don't draw clear lines. They're vague. Hey, don't do that. What's that? Be clear. Give lines. Nothing wrong with rules and boundaries. My dog that I raise has lines, and he knows when he's crossed the line. I would do to Brother Caleb what I do to my dog, but he don't have enough skin underneath here. 
I grabbed my Rottweiler out of his can, and I said, look at me, no. He kind of looks up, okay, whatever. <laughs> Mom and Dad, can I tell you, there's nothing wrong with having clear lines. Now, son, you can have fun on this whole, this whole platform. See this? Anything inside of this black line, all the way around, you can enjoy. Do not cross that line. So your friend gets up. Get up, friend. They've been wanting to play in church for a long time. So they start playing in church. They're, they're just enjoy. Go ahead and enjoy life. But then the friend, the fr be careful, there's people behind you. But anyway, but then the friend just decides, hey, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go. Hey, come over here. Now get this now. At some point, if I make that, son, I told you. Come on. Come on. Now, I told you, don't cry. I don't care if he jumps off a cliff. You understand me? That line is there. Now, let me tell you something. You go across that line one day, you're going to cross the wrong line. You cross the wrong line, and you'll have handcuffs on you. And you'll understand what lines are then. Now, son, you better listen to me. Nothing wrong with lines, mom and dad. That's not hateful. That's loving. You don't believe me, go drive in the Philippines sometimes. They have lines, but they mean nothing. Thank you. Make me, make me see. You know, they, they cross those lines on a mountain, and, and on a curve on a mountain, it's like, oh, oh, don't look out the front window. There's reasons why we have lines. I, and I know this, sometimes a sermon like this is like dragging your fingers down a, a board. And it's just, oh, this is boring. Let me tell you something. This will put some peace inside of your house. Because there's somewhere there's got to be that clear line that we say, okay, we, 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 we can have, we can live inside of this. But outside of this is heartache. Number six, be careful about associations. Notice verse 6, the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away. Mom and dad, let me tell you something. I know this is not popular. You've got to tell your children, no, you're not playing with them. You said, but my children don't understand. They don't have to understand. You're an adult. You understand where a certain crowd leads. Mom and dad, there's nothing wrong with you. No, no, son, you're not. No, no, honey, you're not going to go play with them. No, why? Because you love them. You know, you tell your children, don't go play with the drug crowd. Come on now. But you know there's another crowd that will lead there. Come on now. At some point, mom and dad, you just got to say, okay, on this day, Mother's Day 2020, I've got to learn. I've got to make some decisions. But I've also got to learn. i got to watch my children, who they play with. Why? You're forming their desires of what they want in friends for the rest of their life. Now, I've preached all of that. Now, let me talk to the children real quick. Remember those who've helped you. You know what bothers me the most? We get right with mom and dad when they're laying in a casket right here. I know some of you think that your mom and dad grew up on the ark. And you hate the rules, and you gripe about the rules and how they've lived. Let me tell you something. One day, they're going to be dead. And one day, you're going to look back and say, boy, I wish I'd have told my daddy and my mama I love them. My mama's in heaven. I can't tell her I love her anymore. She's in heaven. At some point in my life, I've got to look at and I've got to say, oh, I want to hug my mom. I want to love my mom while she's alive. When they're gone, it's too late. It's too late. I'm talking to some of you this morning. You've had a rough relationship with mom and dad growing up. They're still your parents. Love them. He said, but they're not perfect. I understand. But you've got to love them. Honor them. You don't have to approve of their lifestyle. 
but you ought to honor them. Mom and dad aren't perfect, but they still love you. My mom and my dad made some mistakes. You say, how do you know? Because I had a brother and two sisters. But anyway, you'll figure that out later on. Let me tell you something. They weren't perfect parents, but they were great parents. And what made them great is what I've talked about this morning. I wish, I wish some of you just take what I've, t I get the CD and play it again and play it again and say, okay, I want to try to help my kids to become a king. Why? Because every child is eventually going to be a king in some kingdom. Who would have ever thought Brother Trim will be the song leader at Maranatha Baptist Church. Who'd ever thought Brother Caleb would be a missionary and a, and a, and a, and a, and a little and a and a helper here at the church and the staff while he's while he's here and they're working on interpreting the Bible. He's been a great help. Who'd ever thought? You have one set of parents. You better love them. If you're not right with your mom and dad this morning, let me tell you something. You need to come down to this altar. Because I'll tell you this. If you're not right with mom and dad, it's going to pass into every relationship that you have. It always does. You get right with mom and dad. You say, but does that mean I have to, I have to approve of what they have done? No. But you better honor them and love them. Because if you don't, if you're bitter at them, it's going to destroy every, every marriage. It's going to destroy all your relationships with your children because it just creeps into every relationship. The greatest thing I've learned is this. It all starts, I get Christ to be my Savior. And He gives me that strength on the inside to do what I've talked about today. But you got to get saved. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. Can I tell you, this baptistry doesn't save you. This church won't save you. Christ is who saves you. Put your faith and trust in him. He will save you. And you'll find you have someone on the inside that can speak to your children's heart as you're working with them. Father, thank you for what we've heard this morning. Lord, just a practical sermon to help us to be the parents we need to be. God, I'm asking you today Help us to be a dad and a mom as we should be. Take the admonitions from the scriptures. Be what we ought to be. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's looking.